Uh, hi everyone, welcome back. And today we are going to be doing a guide for how to write nine mark essay questions for AQA A level geography. This also can apply to any questions you're doing for AS level geography. It's the same structure that you'll need, um, but I'm mostly focusing more on the A level side as that's the majority of the qualifications people on the channel will hopefully be looking to go for, but it works both ways. If you've got nine mark questions for water and carbon coasts, glaciers that you might have in AS level, but it works anyway. I've got some examples in and we'll see how it goes. So I thought I'd add the importance of why you need to know how to do these nine mark questions. It's because in your A level, you will need to answer four nine mark questions in total, two in paper one and two in paper two. So in the first paper, you'll have it under section C. So that will be either in your ecosystems under stress or natural hazards, because your school will only have taught you one of these. You only have to answer that topic and you'll have two nine mark questions in either the natural hazards or ecosystems under stress. And then once again, you will have that in your human paper in section C, and that will be either contemporary urban environments, population and resources or resource security. And again, you'll have two nine mark questions that you will need to answer and you must only do the one that you have been taught. Um, most people do contemporary urban environments. So if you are, it's normally the first one. So that's quite an easy and then you just ignore the rest of the paper afterwards. But just keep in mind what you have to do. And then once one of the questions in both papers will be synoptically linked. And what it means by that is, um, as I've discussed in previous videos, you have to link it to other aspects of geography that you will have studied in the course. So when we're thinking of synoptic links, we could be thinking such as water and carbon, climate change, sea level rise, and then you should have, if you've done coasts, for example, use static sea level rise, isostatic sea level rise or decline. So then you're linking those two ideas together. So you've linked water and carbon to coastal systems and landscapes. Those are drawing ideas into one, because remember geography is a holistic subject when we consider these. Um, so when we base this off, how exactly are you marked? So like 20 mark questions, you're used, will have a band mark scheme. So your examiner will have a band and you don't meet the criteria for higher bands, so level three and four and 20 mark questions or in nine mark questions, there's only a level three, I believe, then you won't achieve more than six out of nine marks because you have to fulfill certain criteria within the bands. And then, but one of the positive aspects of these nine mark questions is they actually follow quite a similar structure to how if you've done GCC geography, um, how you would write an essay for that. Or this is literally how I would have written my essays at GCC and I just transferred it over to A level. It just required a bit more of my knowledge and understanding, a bit more key case study content. Um, but my main advice for when you're writing an nine marker is please just follow the structure because um, following a structure is key in these nine mark questions, whereas with 20 mark, you get a bit more fluidity in how you want to answer it. So nine mark question structure, in order to access the top band, you need to follow a clear and logical structure. Nine mark questions assess your AO1, so your knowledge, and your AO2, that's the application of the knowledge that you have. So um, what were the positive impacts, negative impacts, um, ranking, classifying them, social, economic, environmental. And examiners will have this banded mark schemes using how you've applied your AO1 and AO2 to access level three, which is what I've highlighted here. So here, AO1 is demonstrating detailed knowledge and understanding of concepts, processes, interactions and change, and they have it throughout. That is the main thing. So you need to maintain this consistency throughout the essay in order to gain nine marks, doing it at the first paragraph, but then Oh, well, I did it in the first paragraph, but I've chosen to ignore it in the second paragraph. That won't allow you to access level three because you have to have the same detail throughout your essay. Then with AO2, applies knowledge and understanding appropriately with detail. Connections of relationships between different aspects of study. So when it asks for different aspects of study, that's the synoptic links we're referring to. That's the idea that you need to understand linking things such as climate change to affecting coastal landscapes or altering um, areas within a city, how those going to make different groups feel, the insiders versus the outsiders when you consider things like changing places. And that's why it has to be supported throughout. You can't just do it once. So I thought I'd drop in just a few examples of where you would get a nine mark question and how they would look. So for this first one, I've stolen it off an AS paper. It's called Assess the Role of Weathering in the Development of Coastal Landforms. That was a nine mark question for coasts. Um, it's quite a broad question, doesn't ask for a case study, but 
keep in mind if it's a nine mark question you will need place specific knowledge always even if it doesn't ask for it you need to know that that's why i thought i'd put it in there second one which did come off an a level paper was assess the impact of a recent wildfire event upon people's lived experience of the place and if you haven't done changing places yet that's fine you will or if you've done hazards if you haven't done hazards but you've done changing places again it's fine but note the synoptic link it's asking you to compare the event of a wildfire so natural hazards to how did that impact the people there so how did their lived experience had their attachment to that area that view on that area change after the wildfire did they feel more scared of the area do they have a a, a greater bond to it do they feel more of an outside now they um no longer inhabit the area do they feel displaced that kind of thing um question three note again the question the beginning of the questions what do they ask you to do so this next one was evaluate the relative importance of strategies used to develop safe and sustainable cities in overcoming environmental problems for one urban area you have studied ignore the inbox i don't know why that's there um for one urban area you have studied so keep in mind it only asks for one so you cannot use two. So for example, for my A-levels, I studied Birmingham. So I would only use Birmingham, but I also did study Mumbai. So I'd have to choose which one was more appropriate to the question unless I was asked for both. And then if you look at the language it asks for at the beginning, it says evaluate. So when you hear evaluate, that is basically asking weighing up the pros and cons of um, the thing, whereas assess, you need to maybe determine more of a ranking system. So this impact was worse than this impact or that impact was um, more beneficial than this impact. So you have to really follow the key terminology, which again is leading to the fourth question. To what extent do you agree that seismic events will always generate more widespread and severe impacts than volcanic events? So note how the question requires more than one case study because I doubt if, if one's done it, that's perfectly brilliant, but most people will not have had the same case study for their earthquakes as their volcanoes. So you'll need to know two case studies and be able to compare them and say to which extent using what you've studied, your place specific knowledge and how you've applied that, um, which event was worse? Was it the earthquakes or was it the um, volcanic events that created a massive issue in terms of um, the impact, social, economic, environmental? So we'll get into the main bit, the nine mark question structure. How do you structure the essay? In a, essentially, it's very easy, four paragraphs. That's all you need to do. And they follow a very similar structure. You start with an introduction, very brief, name your case study or case studies if it asks, and the general issues you're going to discuss while you're going to talk about social issues, environmental issues, positive impacts, negative impacts. Um, and that's it, save your time, gives you place specific knowledge. Maybe if you want to show off your knowledge, get into that higher band for definite, um, add in a little fact about the case study that you're going to use and then leave it, move on to the main two bulk of your essay. The first paragraph would be to discuss one argument, one side of the essay that you need to do. So we're going to assume that we've done um, question three here, evaluate the relative importance of strategies used to develop a, say sustainable cities um, in one urban area so if we're going to do this we'll discuss one argument so um, a strategy that's impacted the environmental um, life of a city um, and how has that been good has it been bad and remember to throughout give facts figures so you know how much is air pollution declined or how much has the number of parks in the area grown for example so that's giving it um the spatial scale in terms of you know how much has grown how much developed, and over time so with these strategies how long did they take was it short term long term and then drawing on evaluative points and conclusions throughout the paragraph saying so suggesting this benefit was more important than the other one we could discuss more than two issues then for your third paragraph you need to discuss a contrasting argument so that would be a different argument within your case study so if, say for the first argument i discussed environmental impacts i would then in my second one either discuss social or economic impacts for example and talk about the social benefits of maybe developing sustainable cities so maybe um, less stress on people because of the nicer environment or um, saving money using renewable sources, um, lower pollution or cleaning costs, for example. And again, repeating that structure, it's again a lot more simple than people believe, just giving facts, figures, including some scale in terms of space and time, and then drawing upon conclusions and evaluations throughout. And you just, so basically two and three are just the same, it's just using a different side of your argument. 
And then finally, we've got conclusion. And this is where a lot of people end up downfalling in terms of their nine mark questions because they don't think to do them or they don't do them very well. So in order to access level three and to get a seven out of nine as a, as a minimum in level three, you have to make a conclusion and you have to make a judgment. You can't sit on the fence. That's what I was always taught and they weren't wrong. You have to say what the main or the least impact had on something and it only needs to be short maybe one or two lines with a justification so for say we work on question three we could say overall the evidence suggests while social benefits have proved to be impactful on the city it shows that environmental impacts to a greater extent um, were more beneficial through sustainable development programs that's it that's all you have to do maybe give an extra fact if you have one and maybe give a bit of reasoning, maybe it was more beneficial in the long or the short term, and that will allow you to access the higher marks because then you've given a final justification because they wanted a key conclusion sustained throughout. Um, this is just what to put again in your nine mark question. Um, again, these I've done them before. I think I'll just show you them all in one go. So remember your knowledge and understanding, that's your A01. So that's using key terminology and facts within your essay. So for example, eight parts per million of CO2 has been released in the last 50 years. Then developing that again with AO1 using concepts and processes. So that's being able to define some of the key terminology you've used during your studies. So if you're thinking about water and carbon, things like sea level rise, carbon fluxes, biosphere, atmosphere. If we're moving more towards the human side and you're on paper two, Keep in mind of all those key terms, suburbanisation, migration, uh, remittance payments, energy security, water scarcity, all these kind of things. They want to know that you know these key terms. And then once you've done that, development is the use of spatial and temporal scale. So that's, for example, by 2030, over half the world's population expected to live in cities. Or if we're looking more on a physical paper, approximately only 15% of the whole nest coastline is protected by sea defences. So we've given an example of a time, so spatial um, and temporal. So for example, 2030, that's 15 years, that could be short term, medium term, and then 15% so a spatial distance in terms of how the whole nest coastline is being managed. This is the one I find the hardest as well, I believe number four is being able to analyze and evaluate, that's quite tricky. And when doing that, you have to look at the data and facts you have learned, you have memorized or the data that you could be given um, in a data response question for these and evaluate the positive and negative impacts of the case study that you've studied. So for example, the Holderness Coast has protected 11 kilometres, but 71 kilometres long. So it's good for the economic areas that are mainly protected, but 85% is still at threat. So overall, that's a bit ineffective in terms of a spatial scale, but from an economic standpoint, it has been beneficial. So you look there and you're contrasting, you're saying, it's good on one hand, it's led to this, but we're also not really addressing these issues. And then for the next one, it's what I mentioned again, your synoptic links, you must make reference to other areas of the syllabus. So for example, um, in the video that I will have also posted with this, it's about gentrification. Um, gentrification of areas such as Notting Hill has created the influx of wealthier outsiders into the area and forcing out the previous insiders due to higher rent prices. So we've linked the theories of inside outsider in changing places with the topic of gentrification with um, contemporary urban environments. So we're looking to um, have a mixture of the different topics, show the holistic approach that your examiners will want to see. And then finally, making a conclusion. You must make a decision and state which factor you're discussing is more prominent. To a greater extent, maybe negative social impact of gentrification are outweighing the positive economic impacts because of the rising house prices, as this is forcing wealthier people to move in, displacing the original migrants that came in, things like that. And you have to make that judgment to say a greater extent. And that is all you will need to do. So I thought what we'll do next is we'll have a practice. So I will just say now, you might not see it because my face is there, but I'll just say now, I will now show you where I've included the points and discuss this stuff, a spatial and temporal scale by doing a video in the next one below. I'll add a link and it will be through this essay that I'm circling here about assessing the extent to which the benefits of gentrification have outweighed the costs. 
So if you just follow the next video, I will explain how I've done that, where I've done that, and why it was in level three. Uh, if you would like to like, subscribe the videos and just message me and the account on Jamie the Geographer if you've got any more ideas on advice, some resources, some tips you want, or if you have any work that you might want me to have a look at. So you hand it in and then just before you teach, so you maybe you've got a bit more confidence, I'm more than happy to do that. And hopefully you will find the next video just as useful as this one. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.